And this is the continuation of, of our previous lesson. So in our first se uh, session, we have completed uh, the tips and techniques on paper two, where we did exercise one, exercise two, exercise three, and now, and also exercise four. So now I'm going to continue with the tips and techniques for exercise five and six. That is all we're going to focus on for this session. The component, the overview for exercise five and exercise six so exercise five, it's also a writing um, exercise where you will be writing an email, all right? So this one, it's testing your writing skills. And on the other hand, we have exercise six. It is a formal writing where you will either be given a review, a report, or an article writing. And it also tests on your writing skills. So the marks for both of this exercise will be 16 each. So without any further delay, let's get started with exercise five first. So before we go into the uh, tips and techniques on exercise five, I would like to share some general advice on how you should answer your exercise five and six since it's testing on your writing skills. First, you need to make sure you write at least the minimum word length and aim to complete within the maximum word length. This is very important because they always check on your uh, word limit, okay? So you must write within the minimum word length and aim to complete within the maximum word length. And then second, you need to make sure you keep to the topic. Why? It's because it's very easy to wander away. Wander away means like you easily get distracted away from the subject. So remind yourself by looking again at the question. Make sure you read the question a few times so that you know what exactly you're writing about. Next, check that you know why you are writing, who you are writing, and whether you should be writing informally or formally. These are the three things that you need to pay attention before you actually start writing for exercise five and exercise six. Okay, why? the purpose of you writing, and who are you writing it for, who's the recipient, All right? who's your target audience, and then whether it's an informal or it's a formal piece of writing. So usually exercise five, the email writing is known as the informal writing. And then exercise six, it's a formal writing where you will learn report, uh, review, and also article writing. And another tip that I would like to share is you must include details and explanation to expand your ideas. This is because for the content mark, the examiner is also looking at the development of your writing. Because the content point is given, so it's your creativity on how you are going to develop your content point, how you elaborate, how you share your explanation, how you provide your examples. So this is how the examiners will give marks for your content point. And not only that, you must try to write fluently by using a good range of words, phrases, and types of sentences. You know, we have few types of sentences, right? We have simple sentence, we have complex sentence, compound sentence, complex compound. And one thing that you must remember when you are writing these essays, you are not supposed to use mobile or cell text language, okay? Such as wanna, you know, gonna, GTG, all right? All these are the language that you use when you're texting. But when you're writing and it's for an examination, you have to make sure you write in the full form, okay? This is the formal writing, so you have to make sure you write in the full form. And for the language mark, the examiner will be looking at the level of your vocabulary, and also your sentence structure. So be careful with this. You also need to use paragraphs to show your different ideas and connecting words to link the sentence. Okay, so this is very important for the organization of your writing. And last but not least, you need to make sure you write your spelling, punctuation, and grammar correctly. These three things is very important, okay, because it's a language paper. So all these three criteria plays a very important role, okay? Because the examiner will definitely look at your accuracy for the language mark. 
Okay, so these are some of the general tips. I hope you remember this. So let's get started with exercise five, which is email writing. It's an informal writing. Exercise five, as I said, email is something that you should be familiar of. So what is an email is, it is usually written between people who know each other fairly well. That means they know each other very well, they're close to one another, okay? So why do you actually write email is for you to usually request for information, to congratulate people, to give advice or ask questions, okay? These are usually the aims of your email writing. So when you write email, you need to remember this is an informal writing, so you must keep the tone very light and warm. Okay, you have to be friendly because you're writing it to people that you know. Okay, so you have to try to make it sound friendly and chatty. You're having a conversation with someone that you know very well. It's not someone like a stranger or it's not a, an authority. Okay, so you don't have to keep it too formal. All right. And then next, again, you have to take care of the spelling, punctuation, and grammar. It's a writing task. And usually in the email writing, in the question itself, the content point will be given in the bullet form. Okay? And you have to make sure you write a paragraph for each of the content point given. All right? And then do not use text speech or abbreviations such as, hey, Bobby, how are you? You see? The how are you is not written fully. It shouldn't be like that in your essay. You have to write the full form. Do not use slang such as OMG. Okay, OMG is a slang that you should not be using in essay. And also you should not use contracted work forms like we have, I'm, sorry, you can use allowed because this is an informal writing. Now, have a look at the format of email writing. This is how your email writing will look like. So on the top, we have from, which is the sender's email address. Who is the sender again? Who is the sender again? Yes, you. You as the writer, you are the sender. Okay, next you have the recipient's address, the person who's going to actually receive your email. So you write their address. And then the third one is the subject of your email writing okay what do they mean by subject is you have to write your title or reason of you writing this email what is the purpose of you writing this email and then you leave a single line spacing and you can start with the salutation first dear or dearest and then you provide your recipient's name it could be your friend so if it's your friend obviously you should know your friend's name right so you can write dear ben for example Okay, and then you put a comma. Please remember salutation. After you put the name, you must have the comma. All right, punctuation is important, so please include the comma. After the salutation, leave a single line spacing. And then you can start writing your body paragraph, which is the main content of your email writing. So you must have the introduction paragraph where you greet your friend, you ask for their well-being, and then you tell the purpose of you writing this email. Okay, all this should be included in your introduction paragraphs. Next, you need to talk about the matter in detail. Matter in detail is where you use the three bullet point given in the question. Okay, organize your paragraph accordingly and then you have to elaborate your points. After that, you have to conclude your email writing. So you have to write a conclusion paragraph. And then you leave a single line spacing followed by the signature line, okay? For informal writing, you don't have to be very formal such as like, you know, your sincerely, like how you learn for formal letter, no. Instead, you can keep it simple where you can just use regards, comma, or you can say sincerely, comma. You can say your friend, comma, or you can say yours, comma. All these are the closing lines for email writing. After you have written your signature line, you should write down your name, okay? You must mention who are you, the sender's name, all right? So this is the format. I hope you remember this. This will be very helpful, okay? Now, I'm going to share some phrases that you can use for your email writing, 
For salutation, you can start, of course, it's usually you have to start with dear and then you provide the name, dear band or hi band. Okay, it's usually written where you write the first person, uh, first name of the person who, are, who you are writing it to. Okay, that is for the salutation or greeting. Next, introduction paragraph. Please start your email with warm and friendly opening because it sets the tone for the whole essay. Okay, and also usually the most common one that candidates use is how are you doing? How are you? This one very boring already. Okay, instead you can use this kind of phrases such as thanks for the email. It was good or you can say it was nice to hear from you again. And then you can also make it interesting. Maybe you can pretend like you did not write for a long time. So you can say, sorry for not replying sooner. I have been very busy. Fourth, you can say, I'm sorry. I haven't written or I have not been in touch for such a long time. Okay. And then the fourth one, I haven't heard from you for a long time. And I thought we could catch up on our news. So all these are samples on how you can have a more interesting introduction instead of the boring, how are you? Okay, you can just pretend. Maybe you did not reply them for a long time. Maybe you did not catch up with them for a long time. Okay, so all these are the examples of phrases that you can use. Next, after you have already uh, uh, have a friendly opening, you can start to tell them why you are writing this email. What is the purpose of you writing this email? So usually the purpose will be written in the question paper itself. Okay, it's very important for you to identify it. So you can use phrases like, I am writing this email to you because, and then you state the purpose. Second, you can say, I have been dying to tell you about something. Okay. Third, I was so surprised to hear that. And then you tell what is the topic. Okay, all these are examples of phrases that you can use. Moving on to the body paragraph. Body paragraph is where you write the actual content of your email, okay? You are encouraged to write more details about the topic in your body paragraph, okay? So how can you make it interesting is you need to include adjectives, verbs, and really relay your thoughts and emotions, okay? Because you're sharing it to a friend or someone, a family member or cousin, okay? So they sometimes in the question, they will give you pictures, Okay, to give you some ideas on what kind of story you can write. So you can use the prompts and the pictures in the questions to give you idea on what kind of story you can write. So it will be helpful for you to follow something that is shared in the question. So usually in the question, they have stated what is the purpose of you writing, right? Sometimes it is for you to share news. Sometimes it's for you to apologize regarding something. Maybe you could not make it for your friend's birthday. So that will come under apology. So have a look at the example of phrases here. When you are giving a news or you're sharing your news, a happy news or sad news, you can use some of these phrases here. Okay, the first one, great news about, I'm glad to hear that, sorry to hear about. Or you can say, listen, did I tell you about? Okay, what was it? And then you will never believe what. Or you can also say, I thought you might be interested to hear about. You tell what is the news. Or you can say, by the way, have you heard about? Tell the news. Okay. This is when you want to share an exciting news or sad news or anything related to a new information. The next one is apologies. Okay. When you want to apologize to your friend or any family member. So what kind of phrase you can use is you can say, I'm writing to apologize for missing your party, but I'm, I'm afraid I was with flu. Okay. So you're saying that you couldn't make it to the party because you were sick. Second, you can say, I'm really sorry that I forgot to send you a birthday card, but I was busy with my new job. So all this is how you express that you're feeling sorry. Next one, invitation. It could be either you are inviting your friend or cousin over for something, or you have been invited to a party or somewhere else. Okay, so here are the phrases. Have a look at it. You can say, I'm, or you can say, we are having a party on the Friday 19th, and I hope you will be able to come, All right? You're inviting this person. Second, you can also say, would you like to come or go to see the room with a view with me at the weekend? You're inviting your friend. You, you tell the movie's name, and then you tell when you want to meet them. Third one, I was wondering if you would like to go to the theater or come on holiday with us. 
Okay, this is also another way of how you want to invite your friend over for a holiday. Fourth, you can also ask by saying, could you let me or us know if you can come or you would like to join us? Not only that, if now all this is when you are inviting somebody else, what if you are being invited? Maybe your friend or cousin invited you for something. Such as, after you receive the invitation, you can say, thank you very much for your invitation. I would love to come. This is how you reply, you respond back. Or you can also say, thank you for asking. Or you can say, thank you for inviting me to the reason, I mean, the, the place, the event. But I'm afraid I won't be able to make it. If you can't make it, you have to provide the reason why. Okay? And not only that, sometimes you also write email when you are requesting for something. Maybe you're requesting for a help. All right. So you can use phrases such as, I'm writing to ask for your help. If you could do me a favor. Number two, I wonder if, if or I was wondering if you could help me. Okay. And then third one, I hope you don't mind me asking, but could you possibly, and you tell what is the help you want. Okay. Or you can also say, I would be really grateful if you could, what is the favor that you're expecting? Okay, we have seen invitation, request. Moving on to the next one. When you want to thank someone, okay, or you want to congratulate someone, or you want to wish them good luck or all the best for an exam or something, these are the phrases that you can use. So, for example, the first one, maybe your cousin was over your plate. No, you were at your cousin's place over the last weekend. So, you can say, I'm writing to thank you for your hospitality. Or you can also say thank you for the wonderful present. It was so kind of you to invite me to stay with you. Or maybe your cousin really gave you some good advice. So you can say I really appreciate all your help and advice. Or you want to congratulate your friend or cousin. You can say congratulations on passing your exam. Or you can say congratulations with your excellent exam results. All right? You can say I wish you good luck. Or you can say all the best for your exam, for your driving test, for your interview. All this depends on what is the question asking you to write. Okay? And then you have another one where you make suggestion. Maybe you're writing this email to give suggestion or recommendation to someone else. So you can use phrases like this. Why don't you try? What is it? Maybe you could or how about? Or you can say you can't leave New York without doing something. Okay, and then the fourth one, you can say, sorry, the third one, you can say, I'm sure you will enjoy. What was it? Okay, and then the fourth one, do visit. So all these are phrases that you use when you're making suggestion or recommendation. And the last part of the email, the closing part. So the closing paragraph is the end of your email. Okay, and it is as important as how it is in the beginning, your introduction paragraphs. Okay, so there are some standard ways of wrapping up your email. For example, you must provide a reason why you're actually ending the letter. Okay, you can use phrase like, anyway, I must go and get on with my work. I guess it's time that I got on with the studying that I've been avoiding. So this is why you are uh, ending the letter, ending the email, because you want to go already, you have something to do. So you provide the reason. This is how you write. Second, after you have stated why you're ending the letter, you have to share your greetings or you can make a reference for future context, such as you can say, send my regards to your parents, for example, or you can say, give my love to your parents. Or you can also say, Anyway, don't forget to let me know the dates of the party because you are making a reference, okay, that they want to be in touch. All right, you can also say, I'll try and phone you at the weekend to check the times. And not only that, you can also use, we must try and meet up soon. I can't wait to hear from you. Or you can also say, looking forward to seeing you again. Hope to hear from you soon. See you soon, right soon. All these are... Examples of how you make reference for future contact. Now, closing statement, the closing line. For informal letter, which is the email writing, you can use words like love, lots of love, all the best, take care, regards, best wishes, kind regards, or you can say your friend. Okay, all this is how you close the statement before you actually write that, before you actually sign off your name. Okay, your name should be under the closing line. 
All right, please remember this, yeah? So everybody clear with the format? Can we have a look at a sample question? Okay, sample question for exercise five. This is how your question will look like. So you can see here, your family has recently got a new pet. Okay, write an email to a friend telling them about the pet. And then you see the question itself. It says, in your email, you should describe the pet, explain how you look after your new pet, say how the pet makes you feel and why. And then you see they have also included two pictures. So the pictures may give you some ideas and you can also use some ideas of your own. So in the picture, you can see what is that? What is that you can see on the picture? Yeah, tortoise. Okay, and also a cat or kitten. So this is just to give you an idea. Maybe you can think that the turtle, sorry, the tortoise and the kitten or cat is actually your new pet. Okay, this is just an idea. If you don't want to write about it, it's fine. All right. Your email should be between 150 to 200 words long. This is the word limit, don't forget. You will receive up to eight marks for your content and another eight for the language. So the overall marks will be 16. Now let's have a look at the examiner tip. Of course, you need to pay attention to the information in the instruction, which tells you what you need to do. All right, what style is it on? Is it an email? So you know it's an email. You need to follow the format of an email. Who are you writing it to? So in this question, who are you writing it to? Who are you writing it to? Yes, to a friend. Okay, you are writing it to a friend. And what points you need to include? For example, describe your new pad. Okay, so you need to remember to cover all three points and also how many words you should write. These are the main things that you need to pay attention when you're writing an email. Okay, and also don't forget, please spend some time on how you are going to plan and organize your points. How many paragraphs are you going to write? How many ideas are you going to include in your email? Okay. And this draft that you make will actually be helpful and it will save you time when you actually start writing the actual answer. Okay. Because you already have what information you need to include and in which order. So that's why it's important for you to draft out what you're going to write. And then examiner tip four, don't just include short answers. Okay, to the bullet points, develop your ideas by adding examples, comparing things that are happening now with something in the past, or comparing situation or somebody else. And don't forget, like I said earlier, you must start your email with introduction, and then you must give information, and then you will have conclusion as well. And if you're going to write about more topics, then yes, you can include in other paragraphs. Another thing that you are encouraged to do is you must connect your ideas in the sentences within the paragraph, okay? You also need to use linkers. Like I said, linking words such as, you know, the furthermore, therefore, in addition, all these are examples of linking words. So without any linkers, then your writing will be very simple and unnatural. So that is why you are encouraged to use linking words. Look at this. This is the sample answer for email writing, okay? So if you notice, there is no email address on the top. Certain questions, they will instruct you to write the email address, then you will write it. If they don't instruct you to write, you don't have to write it. You can straight away start with the salutation or the greeting, which is, hello Mia, or you can say, dear Mia. I want you to read this, okay? So you see the first paragraph, introduction. The first thing that you do is you ask their well-being, you greet them. How are you? How is your family? And then you straight away go into the purpose of you writing. You're going to share some news. So you say, I have very exciting news. Are you ready to hear it? You won't believe it. My family has got a brand new member in it, a new pet. Okay, so this is how you introduce your topic of your email. Moving on to the first body paragraph. Last weekend, we decided to go to the pet shop to finally get a cat. I got inside the store and immediately saw the cutest kitten I had ever seen. From the moment I noticed her blue eyes and silky soft and shiny fur that was mostly black and white. And I fell in love with her. 
So you see how did the writer make this writing interesting? Do you see the adjective that is being used here? Words such as blue eyes, silky, soft, and shiny fur. And you can also see that was mostly black and white. All these are adjectives. Okay? You use adjectives to describe something and it becomes automatically more interesting. I wake up every day at 5 o'clock. I play with her for 45 minutes and I give her breakfast as soon as we finish playing. I really miss her when I'm at school, but when I return in the afternoon, I cannot stop playing with her. Her favorite toy is the squishy plastic mouse. As soon as I throw it away, she starts chasing it and sometimes she brings it back. The most important thing is that she seems to have endless energy and never gets bored when it comes to playing. Trina makes me. Trina is the cat's name. So you can obviously provide the name for your new pet. She makes me feel happy and secure because she's always enthusiastic. I love her so much. So you see, you express your love for your new pet. And then your conclusion paragraph. I hope you will be able to come to my house and meet her because I know you will definitely adore her. Okay, that means you're inviting your friend over. Once you're done with the conclusion paragraph, you, use, you have to use the closing line such as, write back soon, love you, comma, and then you include your name. Okay, any questions for email writing? All clear so far? Email writing? Okay, so we have done with exercise five. Moving on to exercise six. Exercise six is a formal writing where you should have learned the three types of formal writing by now. The first one is report writing. Second one is review writing. And we have article writing. Even though there's only three uh, categories here, just remember report, there's only one. But review has three different formats. The reason is because we have three different types of review. We have cost review, we have book review, we have film review. Okay, we will go through all that one by one. And for article, we have two types as well. We have magazine article and we have newspaper article. Okay, but first we will have a look at what is report writing first. Report writing is usually written to give information or updates and suggestions to the reader. Okay, you are like informing them about something. Okay, or you're updating or you're giving suggestions to your readers. So usually report is about an event that has happened. Okay, so you as a writer, you must, you must analyze or observe these events. And not only that, reports are always written for a particular audience. You will have a target audience, okay? And they have to be clear, objective, biased, and reporting the facts. So some of the examples that usually you will write report for is, for example, you write report on school trip, or you can write a report on organized school event, or you can write a report on work placement day. So how are you assessed for your report writing? Two things, which is the language and the organization. Okay, so this one, you just have to remember, I'm sure your teacher have gone through this. I'm going to show you on how you're going to write the report writing. You must have the addressee first. Who are you writing it for? Usually in the question itself will be stated, is it to the principal? Is it to the class teacher? So you must mention in the beginning of your report writing. After you have the addressee, you need to write the title. You are reporting on what? Even that uh, title will be given in the question. You just have to extract it and then include it in your report. So you can say report on the work placement day. That will be your title. And then you leave a single line spacing and you can start with the introduction paragraph. So have a look at the example there at the bottom. The purpose of this report is to outline a recent work placement day organized for the year 11's working at a local shopping mall. The report includes what was learned by the students and how the experience could be improved next year based on a meeting with the year 11. This is how you write an introduction paragraph. And then you can start with your first body paragraph, okay? You can say the learning experience. You can say to begin with, 
The feedback from the student was positive as there were many opportunities to learn new skills. The main skill was how to communicate effectively with customers as they were able to learn this skill from experience of employees who they were paired up with. When they had gained enough confidence, they were allowed to work on their own. Okay, so this is how you write the first body paragraph. And then you can continue, you can explain your details. You can say another skill that was learned was that taking responsibility and this was evident with the students working in the restaurant as they were allowed to take on various responsibilities from collecting survey, sorry, collecting money, waiting on tables and even cooking lunch. And conclusion, how do you conclude it is you have to say how was the day for you? So you have to provide opinion on the facts that was discovered. So you can say overall the day was provided the day provided them with much needed work experience. They were thankful that the school organized it and they would like similar opportunities in year 12. So this is their recommendation and suggestion. They want something similar to be organized next year. Okay? So this is how it is done. So this is how your report writing will look like. The format is very simple. You just need to make sure you have the title, okay? And then followed by five paragraphs. Introduction, body paragraph, followed by the conclusion paragraph, okay? Any questions on report writing? The format is standard, yeah? No question? Moving on to the next one, next formal writing, we have review writing. This is where you will learn three different types of review. What is a review writing? Review writing is for you to give your opinion about something. For example, your feedback or opinion on a movie, a book, or about a game, or about a product, or about a restaurant, or it is about a concert that you attended. Okay, you are writing your opinion, your feedback. Okay, and it needs to engage the audience from the beginning all the way till the end and there must be a conclusion as well, okay? So in this review writing, you can be subjective and give your own opinion, which means you can include both positive and negative points, okay? Doesn't mean you just have to give the positive one only, no such thing. Review writing, you are free to give positive and negative comments, okay? Not only that, you must remember to include relevant details, and evidence to support the opinions that were expressed. Okay? So these are the three types of review writing. Please pay attention. This might be coming out this year. You never know. Okay? Book review, movie review, and course review. All these three, same format, but the content will be different. Okay? Let me show you how it's going to be different. We will start with book review first. Book review is usually written to state your views on the stories that you have read. Okay, you get a book, a storybook, you read the story, and you must understand your uh, what is the storyline. Okay, then only you will be able to share your views about the story. Please remember, review doesn't mean that you must write a summary of the story. Summary and review are two different things. Summary is basically a short summarized version of what is the story about. But review is your feedback, whether you like the movie or, I'm sorry, whether you like the book or whether you did not like the book. Okay? So you need to share your views about the parts of the story that intrigue you and remember to state why. Every time you say you like the book or you don't like the book, you must provide reasoning for that. Okay? Then only it will justify your statement, okay? And please remember, you are also required to recommend the book to your readers with your reasons. The recommendation, usually you can include in the last paragraph, the conclusion. Would, would you recommend this book to other people or not? Okay, so the format. This is the format of book review, okay? You must have a title, Usually, the books will have a title, right? So, you can write the name of the book itself in your title. For example, you're writing about Harry Potter. So, you write Harry Potter book review. 
Okay, and then introduction paragraph, you need to include brief info about the book, such as name of the book, who is the author, all right, who are the characters, and what gender is it on, okay? All these you can include in your introduction paragraph. You can even say when was it published, okay? Body paragraph, you need to include brief description of your story, all right? What is it actually all about? You can write a very brief description only, not a summary, and then you have to include your opinion of the story. Was it a boring story? Was it a cool story? Was it, uh, how do I say, what kind of genre is it? Is it horror? Is it adventure? Is it romance? Is it rom-com? Is it science fiction? All these you can include in your body paragraph. Okay? And your closing paragraph, you must provide the recommendation of why they should read the book. Okay? whether you would recommend this book to anyone else or not, okay? And must state why, okay? Reasoning is very important, don't forget. Okay, this is the format, okay? Please remember this. Moving on to the second type, movie review. So a movie review, usually you write a movie review to state your views on the story of the movie that you have watched or seen, okay? So what is the difference between a book and a movie review? So the difference between a book and movie review is usually stated in the recommendation part. Okay, you can either give a positive review or the negative review of the movie. And this is the format for movie review. Okay, same thing, you must write the title of the movie. And then in your introduction paragraph, you pro uh, provide the brief information about the movie, such as name of the movie, you know, who is the producer, who is the director, who are the main characters, who, the, who are the minor characters, who is the villain, who is the protagonist, who is the antagonist, okay? All this you can include in your introduction paragraph. Not only that, you can also include brief description about the story of the movie. What is it all about? All right. The climax, you can talk about climax. You can talk about the ending. Was it happy or sad? And then you also have to share your opinion. Did you enjoy the movie? What did you not enjoy? Maybe you did not like how the uh, villain acted. Okay. You can talk about the characters as well. And the closing, the recommendation, whether they should watch the movie or not to watch. Either one, you decide. If you want them to watch, who would you recommend it, recommend it for? Maybe the movie is related to horror, okay? So you would like to recommend this movie to people who actually enjoy horror movies, okay? So you must state why. Moving on to the third type of review writing, which is the cost review. Course review is written to share your views about an event that you had attended, okay? It could be a workshop, it could be a seminar, all right? So you have to share your view about it. So you may not only write about the content of the event, but you must also write about the people who have, you have met at the event or the environment of the event. Okay, this is the format. Same thing, you must have the title, and then introduction paragraph where you provide the brief information about the course. What is the course about? Is it a cooking workshop? Is it a dance class? Is it a singing class? Okay. And then your body paragraph, you need to include description of the content of the course, your opinion of the course. So in this body paragraph, you can talk about what you learned, what are the activities that was conducted in the workshop or seminar. Okay. There's a lot of things that you can talk about. Closing, recommendation to attend the course. Would you recommend other people to join or not? And then you have to state why. Okay? I have attached a sample of movie review. This is the movie review on the movie called as Mission Impossible Fallout. This is how you write a review for movie. Okay? <clears throat> so you see the first paragraph. Do you love action-packed films which keep you gripped to your seat? If so, put Mission Impossible Fallout on the top of your must-see film list this year. So this is how you grab your reader's attention. Okay? And then you have to talk about what is the, who is the, who are the lead role? Okay? What is the story about? And so on. 
And then you see the conclusion paragraph. This is the film for the big screen, so do not miss out when it hits our cinema. It is more suited for teenagers and adults due to the strong language and brutal fight scenes. So you see here, they are telling you who is it recommended for, who should actually watch this movie. So it's clearly stated that it's for teenagers and adults. Why? Because it has a lot of strong language and brutal fight scenes. So it's not appropriate for youngsters like kids or any other like below than you know the teenagers. Okay. The three sentence will take you on a memorable journey into the dark world of international secret age. And that's how you make a very good closing paragraph for review. All right. And the last writing for formal writing, which is article writing. Article writing is usually intended for publication in newspaper, magazine, or journal. Okay, and usually article writing is for wide audience. That means you your audience are very uh, large. Okay, it's for wide audience. So it's essential for you to attract and retain the reader's attention. You can be formal, you can be informal, depending on your target audience. So if your audience is school students, that means you're writing school magazine, then you can maintain a very uh, formal, informal tone but more friendly way, okay? If you're writing it for newspaper article, then you have to maintain the formal language, okay? Because your audience is the public, okay? It's a wide audience. And not only that, you must provide opinions and thoughts as well as facts, okay? Usually magazine, you must support your statements with thoughts, opinions, and facts, Okay, you must describe an experience, event, person, or place. You must present an opinion, bread, or balance argument. Provide information or offer suggestion or advice. All these needs to be included in your article writing. Okay, a realistic article should consist of these four things. The first one is an eye-catching title. I think you guys know this. An eye-catching title is very important because the title is what attracts your reader's attention and suggests the theme of the article. The moment they read the title, they will know what is your article all about already. Okay, so make sure you write an eye-catching title. Second, an introduction which engages the readers or outlining the main point of the article to follow and clearly define the topic to be, to be covered. Third one is the main bo uh, body paragraph of two to five, where you discuss about the topic in developed detail. And the last one is a conclusion, where you summarize the topic, you provide the final opinion, recommendation, or the comment. Okay? These are some of the example phrases that you can use when you're expressing your opinion. For example, I agree or disagree with the above statement. You can say, in my opinion. You can say, I feel or believe that. Or you can say, I am against the idea that of, or it seems to me that. Or you can say, my personal view or opinion is that. All these are when you want to state your own opinion. You want to express yourself, whether you agree or you disagree. So these are the phrases that you can use. Okay? So before you actually start writing your article, there are certain things that you must consider. Okay? First is, where is the article going to appear? Is it in a newspaper? Is it in a magazine? Is it a school magazine? Or is it for a public magazine? You need to know where it's going to be appearing. Okay? Second, who are your intended readers? Intended readers means your target audience. Who are you writing it for? Who are going to read your article? Okay, so is it for a specific group such as students or is it for teenagers or is it for adults in general? Third, what is the aim of your article? Are you going to advise or are you going to give suggestion? Are you going to share information? Or are you giving compare and contrast details or are you going to describe about something? Okay, and the last one is you need to know your audience, okay? Usually, the audience will be stated in the question itself. So, it's usually in your past year paper, 
most of the time, if article writing is out, then it's usually a school magazine. So your target audience will be school students. All right. And this is the format for magazine article. Please pay attention to this. For a magazine article, first thing that you need to have is a heading or a title. Like I said, an eye-catching title is very important. It has to be short and attractive. Okay. Number two, your opening, your introduction paragraph. You must introduce yourself. Who are you and why are you writing this article? Okay. And the purpose of it. Okay. And then after your introduction paragraph, move on to the body paragraph. Paragraph one, you can state about the opinions and ideas you want to offer. Okay. Paragraph two, the contrasting idea. What is different idea from paragraph one? Okay. And you can also include view of general public disagreeing or agreeing to the topic. All right. Paragraph three is your own personal opinion of view and reasons. And your conclusion paragraph, the last paragraph, of course, you must share an impactful message for your readers, which can be an advice or recommendation or warning or solution. Okay. This is how you write your magazine. I'm going to share a sample for you. For example, this magazine is about you writing on a school snack magazine. Okay. Sorry, school snack machine. Okay, you're introducing a school snack machine. So you see the first paragraph. Currently, the hot topic at our school is if we should install a snack machine machine. So do we need one? These days, this type of machine is commonplace in our shopping malls and airports. However, schools are often reluctant to have them installed as it could have some negative impact on the student's health. Okay, this is something like vending machine. Okay, so now you're going to argue some points on is it good or is it not good to have this machine? So you see the second paragraph. One of the main argument in favor of having this machine is that it provides easy access of snacks throughout the day. Furthermore, students have missed a meal, for students who have missed a meal, would not feel hungry. Therefore, there will be no need for them to wait until the school shop open later in that day. So this is the positive side of having a school snack machine. The third paragraph you see, on the other hand, this is the counter argument. On the other hand, one of the main arguments against this is that snacks may be unhealthy for the students as the popular ones contain high levels of sugar and saturated fat. As a result, students might supplement their diet with these unhealthy options rather than maintain a healthy balanced diet that they would typically have by eating the lunches the school provides them. So you see, this is how you counter your argument. First, you provide the positive side and then you provide the negative side of it. And the last paragraph, given these points, installing a snack machine at the school would be very convenient for students. However, the machine needs to be carefully monitored to avoid any further impact on the student's health and to make any necessary changes if required. Clear? This is how you write a magazine. You must support your explanation with examples and justification. So we have come to the end of our session, okay? So we have covered exercise five and six in the morning. We did exercise one, two, three, and four, and now five and six. So basically, we have covered paper two so far.